some folks might be like, well, oh, that's like, is it like a gimmick? You're saying Moses first said it is what it is? No, he said, he said Jehovah. But that's a whole different idea. And um, we want to just introduce this book and Macy's works. This is one of our um, publication rates. This book, actually, is book one and, and book two. You can see the, the size and difference. Book one is book one is uh, book one and book two of Gerald Macy's first volume called The Book of the Beginning. This is very important, but this is this is more like high school report, um, college level. Uh, there's some things there that for elementary learners need to learn, but these are more not to say. Um, higher level, but they are of a more mature knowledgeability because it includes the language and linguistics crossing over many different languages, going to ancient Egypt, going to the Hebrew Bible, so forth and so on. And the reason why we're bringing in um, a book of the beginnings, this is Book of the Beginnings, Volume 1, and this is Book of the Beginnings, Volume 2, and ones can um, order one or both of them from our website. And there's a lot of other distributors and PDFs out there if you just want to see it digitally. But for many of us, it's good to have it digital, and that that's out there freeware, and also to get it in a book form. So you can check us out at www.lojsociety.org for more on that. But the reason why we mention this is because Macy's study, Gerald Macy's um, Egyptology and his um, comparative studies of uh, of the Bible, the Hebrew Bible, and certain other theological, mythological discussions. What particularly interests us about Macy, and now that we think about it, we probably should have maybe put a picture of the brother. He was a white boy, a European, but he was honest. He was truthful. He is one of those in the days of... Um, the apostolic age when there were Gentiles, you know, non-Hebrews, non-Jews, for us non-blacks, but they were honest to God, honest to God. And that's one thing about Macy's works that is so refreshing amongst a lot of other whitewashed, racist, pseudo-intellectuals, the rest of them, that will bend over backwards to deny the role of black people and African people in both the religious tradition, but just in humanity, any contribution towards humanity. Macy basically says in his works that in order to even begin to understand the Bible, one has to go to Africa, and these things come out of the inner African tradition. You understand? The inner African, he pointed to Ethiopia, to Ethiopia, the ancient Ethiopia, what he calls Ethiopia of the North. Now, that's curious. Ones will look at the map today and say, oh, they must mean Eritrea or Aksum. But we have to remember that the whole earth was in a different alignment. And what we're on the cusp of witnessing again, whether dramatically, suddenly, which would be catastrophic and devastating, that's like the great earthquake that the Almighty speaks about in the book of Revelation and through the prophets, or whether gradually, which we'll call it more climatic changes, and there might be floods and fires and certain devastations here to there, volcanic eruptions as the plate teutonics are changing. So check our video speaking on the polar shift, the African polar shift and the polar shift, the 40-degree polar shift, because there we see Africa shifting um, to a more northern, with Ethiopia at a more northern position. Now, if we didn't have that particular knowledge that we have, for example, the knowledge of plate teutonics and so forth and so on, ones would not be able to even comprehend or imagine that the plates can shift and that the land masses that we see today on today's global and earth and world map was actually in a different orientation. And remember what the divine word said, the Melukotal week says, as it was in the beginning, so shall it be in the end of the Ionis or the end of the Alam, the end of this cipher, this circle, this particular age. And this is where we are right now. We want to show you another little article right here, because this is the first of the year, reasonings and lectures. 
uh, I think NASA says, I think we still have it right here, where NASA, you know, the American Nazi scientists, they basically said that, uh, let's bring this up right here, we still have it, um, it was on MSNBC, concerning the 2012, um, oh, NASA, colon, the apocalypse is not now. That that means when you see that we're gonna we'll, we'll show you a clip of it hopefully in the next video. NASA they have an interesting um, artist rendition of what they say could be um, Nibiru, a, 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 a painting. They tell us it's a painting, a sketch, or artist rendition, and what looks to be a blue planet, perhaps the Earth, so forth and so on. And um, it's really interesting because you know when they say. It's not, it really is, it's just that they want to get their hands on it so they can sell it back to you. You know, that's kind of how they do. But anyway, that whole connection right now, we're living, we live in interesting times. So we're mentioning the book of the beginnings, right? Because some of the references, for example, with Ethiopia of the north, it's interesting because he's going back to the ancient mythologies and the ancient writings and saying that Ethiopia in the ancient mythologies of ancient Egypt, which is a repository for tens of thousands of years. For example, the ancient Egyptian astronomical, uh, astronomical calculations of the astronomy and the astronomical calculations. In order, remember, they didn't have computers like we so-called have computers and other things now, and now they can what they call reverse engineer things. You know, like we can now find out that actually Christ, Jesus Christus, Yeshua HaMoshiach, he was born in and around September 11th, which is Ethiopia's New, New Year's Day. But of course in the West, now because of terrorism, so forth and so on, they have tried to re-engineer that whole, that whole timeline, to reshape that timeline, to keep the apocalypse, to keep the kingdom of the King of Kings and his Christ in an indefinite status. Remember what we talked about time manipulations, you know, the whole thing about time, it, it works the same way. Because if people think, well, it's something that might be way down the line, so forth and so on, and the collective consciousness is all part of it as well. See, they understand how to shape the collective consciousness so people cannot think for themselves and cannot add above three. You know, they can't count above three. Well, it's a little bit difficult for them. But anyway, on this particular subject matter about Moses, we want to make a couple of references here. For example, book one, there was something I think we remember on page 64, which we wanted to introduce into this. We use Macy's works and a lot of other relative works like this as, as, a, uh, as a reference, as a, as a reference source, in a, as a referral source, as we're doing our studies. We use this as a reference source. If you try to read through it, it's a very interesting read. And, um, but one has to study, kind of study the, 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 there's a lot in here is what we're trying to say. And some discard it completely. But one thing we love about Macy, Macy said that the Europeans have a madness. As a Europe, and remember, this is the white boy. This is the European, a scholar, excellent Shakespearean scholar, understanding language, the Egyptian scholar, even to our surprise, introducing some elements of the Ethiopic, which are very accurate and which many Ethiopians don't even know. I'm talking about a lot of scholarly people, things that are part of our collective or should be a part of our collective knowledge. So Macy's works were suppressed for many years because he knew the truth about what his so-called white brothers mainly, and now they have white sisters doing the same thing, how they were trying to um, interpret the ancient from a, an Aryan or a European perspective. And Macy was one to say, no, it's not from an Aryan European perspective, it's from an African, and in the African perspective, and at the root is the Ethiopia, is Ethiopia. If you want to understand ancient Egypt, the Hebrew Bible, Christianity, you have to go to that comparative um, mythological root and cultural and social. He's saying that a lot of the things that Europeans have misunderstood is things that, let me see if I can simplify this for you. A lot of things the Europeans 
didn't don't understand about the Bible is similar to things they don't understand about black people to this very day. You know what I mean? For example, let's take let's take it is what it is. This is our particular subject matter right here. It is what it is. We saying that Moses first said that it is what it is. Now someone say no. He said I am. Now remember, the the Bible translation is based on their translation. You go to other Bibles, you see little nuances. It might not say I am that I am. In some Bibles, they may prefer to say well Asher means who. It can also mean who. You understand or one whom. So they can add those little words. It's very subtle. You understand, very subtle changes. Why the King James is the best of the, not, not perfect. The King James is not, the translation is not perfect. And we want to note this. But structurally speaking, you understand, structurally speaking, for those who want to study and go beyond just the English and get to the Hebrew and the Greek and to, to the ancient root, and hopefully to the Ethiopic truth, the King James is one of the better ones of it. So when we say it is, people would object to the it, as we mentioned in the first part. People would say, well, it. You know what I'm saying? Well, you have he, it, and you have she, it. And this is according to the Afro-Shemitic languages. In the Afro-Shemitic, and what do we mean by Afro-Shemitic languages? We're speaking about, let's go to the ones that you've probably heard about, like, um, Hebrew. Hebrew is an Afro-Shemitic language. Just think about that. That's not how they make us believe. They make us believe that it has nothing to do with Afro-African black folks. You understand? They try to make us believe that they say that the Falashas, the Beta Israel of Ethiopia, they don't know no Hebrew. You mean they don't know your Yiddish brew. They don't know your Yiddish brew. They're learning Yiddish brew. But the very root of Hebrew is that language the Falashas spoke liturgically. Gutas, you understand, is the Gutas or the Ethiopic. And we have a new work out that we hope ones get to check out, Ethiopic, our first language, which endeavors to reveal that root, that, that truth again to our people who need to know. So it, it can be it, he, he is. Who he is. Now, the interesting thing is this. People will say that the name, see, from this, the name, the great name Jah comes out. Another kind of interesting thing. Let's put this right here. Jah, the name, the name Jah, who is known from the ancient time, and according to some of the documentation and evidence that Macy provides us, especially in book two. Book one is good, but on this particular subject matter, book two in book two, explains that Jah is actually the black God. Now, let's see if we can pull that up, that Jah is the black God. I mean, when we read this, we was like, like, wow, this is something else. You know what I'm saying? This is something other than what they told us. And Jah and Jehovah is not the same name. It's interesting because Jah is the particular name used for the great God in the Hebrew Psalms. Now, if you understand that the Psalms go all the way back to Tehuti, the root of the Psalms, the message, the music, it's like nowadays everyone sings Negro spirituals. Have you noticed that? Everybody sings. I mean, I was watching some program about, I think, Asians. They could have been Korean or Chinese or even Japanese. And they were singing some Negro spiritual. You know, it's, well, they don't call it Negro spiritual. But they were singing these black songs, songs that really came from the plantation, songs that Massa did not know until he kept hearing the Negroes singing, singing this song, and he had somebody sing it for him, and he wrote it down, and he put his name on it. You know how they do that. Anyway... Um, let's just share a little bit of this. So, so the name of Jah, which in the Hebrew is Yah, which comes from Exodus 3.14, the first person. When we have I am that I am, this is the first person, right? This is the first person. Like, it is what it is. I almost, let, let me say it in a black way. I be who I be. Yo, I be who I be. Well, who are you? I be who I be, man. That's, you know, in other words, it will be what it will be. I am who I am. I was what I was. That sort of reality. So this is the key thing when we look into the scripture and Moses says to 
Elohim to El Shaddai, El Shaddai, he says, what is his name? The people are going to ask, what shall I say to them? And God said to Moses, 314, I am that I am. And he said, thus, in other words, like this, in Dihu, shalt thou say to the children, the Bane Yisrael, the Dekika Israel, Yisrael Lejochman, let I am, and they have it in caps in your Bibles, King James says, I capital A M, I am. Which in the Hebrew is, is Aleph, Hey, Yo, Hey. Aleph, Hey, Yo, Hey. Now, this is very interesting about this, right? This looks like a, a um, what do you call it? Not an acronym, but um, to get in the word right now, but uh, like scrambled. The letters are kind of scrambled here, right? And, uh, anagram. Thank you. Thank you. Anagram. Um, it's like an anagram. Because at the last part, you have yes. They say yes. Tricky, tricky, tricky. But really, it's ya. Yeah. It's ya. Yeah. Another interesting thing, too, when they, when they look at us as Rastafari and the revelation of Rastafari, which is as the revelation of God, as the revelation of the true God, always has been inexplicable. People say, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong. That's not it. And then gradually over time, little by little, S by S, they begin to recognize how true. And then they come back and say, well, how did you know? How did you know such and such? And we was, what did we tell you from the very beginning? It's the revelation of of the Almighty God, but they don't want to, they, they are unbelievers, they, they, they don't want to admit it, they don't want to believe it, so let that be that. Now, the interesting thing about this portion right here, Exodus 3.14, right, Schofield says it's the revelation of the name of Jehovah. Now, where did this take place? This took place in the scene, the scene we'll call this the burning bush scene, the burning bush scene. Right, I know we can get into some some kind of balsam and and cannabis talk, but let's first deal with the Almighty, with the God, and before we deal with the sacrament of the true God. When we look at three and fourteen, right, it says the revelation of the name of Jehovah. They're lying right there in, in the Schofield, uh, the subscription. Not that they intend to lie, but there's some things that they they only knew what they knew. But they say it's the revelation of Jehovah. But one thing that's interesting about Macy is explaining something here that's very important. Um, let's see if we can bring that up. We, we made a couple of highlights here so we can share it with you in this video right here because there's a lot of, there's a lot of trace information that needs to be um, looked up and needs to be verified because just because it says it here, right here, it says in the first chapter of Genesis, this is from page 149 of book 2. In the first chapter of Genesis, the creator is called Elohim. In the first chapter, in the Hebrew, Elohim. The Schofield Study Bible in chapter 1, um, in chapter 1, uh, footnotes for chapter 1, and some of y'all do have Schofield Study Bibles and probably have not rightly or properly utilized these these footnotes, the footnotes down there are to study, brothers and sisters, they're to study it. Yeah, all those verses, you know, all those verses, look them up. You know what I'm saying? This could take you a day. This could take you an hour. This could take you a week. You know, like that old song, like you could get there by, by trailways, by Amtrak. Just get there as soon as you can get there. That's the main point. In the first chapter of Genesis, the creator is called Elohim. In the second chapter, the divinity, the Melakot, is denominated, it says Jehovah or Y-H-W-H, and countless volumes have been written on the two different deities. What? The two different deities? Get that? Hmm. But they said that, okay, let, let, let's first go on. What, what it says right here, two different deities of the Elohistic and Jehovistic accounts of the creation, whereas it will be made manifest that both that both have both of these names, both have one and the same nature under the two different under the two different names. Now in English, in the King James and from a Western Gentile misunderstanding, you never see that difference. They, 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 they say it's God, 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 God. But then actually, if they were to teach you 
um, from the Hebraic where you find out that the word sound God, God, is actually a false God or Gad, troop, legion, you know, Gad means troop. But the Gad, God, that they worship is the legion that Christ cast out. Okay, we'll, 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 we'll try to get into that, um, make, make a note of it. Um, so here it goes on to say, also the Hebrew carefully restrains, okay, he's breaking down here concerning the name of, um, okay, let's go through this. The, the greater mysteries were held at midnight. In truth, night was the earliest time of light. Night was the earliest time of light. Mind me, was that the light shineth in darkness, but the what? Darkness comprehendeth it not. And the evening and the morning were the first day. True. The Jewish Sabbath beginning at night still records this fact, and this is what we remember. So we stay grounded in the truth, in the root of creation. Night was the mother of all the manifestors of light. Night was the mother of all the manifestors of light. The son of night that passed forever through the underworld and returned in spite of death and darkness was the victorious one, the helper, the saver, saver the comforter, whose first manifestation was the morning who came to evoke religious fervor of those whom the night and its terrors had already brought into a kneeling attitude of fear. Hmm. This was the particular deity made known to Moses as the sun in the akar. Now, the akar, A-K-A-R, as in the Hebrew, they have akor. A-K-A-R and A-C-H-O-R, and there's a link there, and it connects with Ethiopia or the hinder part. Remember Moses was told that you'll see the backward parts, not my face, because no one can see him and see my face and, and live. In other words, if you see it, you have to die in order to be born again in order to see God's face. That even God can be in front, but you can't see him. You can't recognize him until you die. You have to be born again. That's the idea behind it. So the hinder part of the celestial circle, the celestial circle, the cosmos, there's a front part and there's a back part, right? By the name of Jah. So the, the deity was revealed to Moses. Remember what? Let's go back to uh, or forward. Let's go forward to Exodus 3.14 again. Let's go to, forward to Exodus 3.14. And there's something very interesting that um, is said um, in 314 and even furthermore where the God who revealed himself to Moses as Jah, he says that he was not known, you know what I'm saying? He was not known by this name to the fathers. This is what is very, very interesting. And when you get to chapter 6, right, the answer that they say of Jehovah to Moses, we prefer to say Jah, the answer of Jah. And this is interesting because you look at Psalm, what is it, Psalm 68, verse 4, where it says, And he who rides upon the heavens, some interpret rides through the desert, but rides upon the heaven, heavens by his name, Jah, Rastafari. But the, the key point is Jah. Right, Rastafari, the, the 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 true spirit of God and Christ among the Rastafari, directed them to that particular verse and to that particular name, Jah. How interesting, because this does not say Jehovah. It doesn't say that. They will tell you that this is the revelation of Jehovah, and we will say that Jehovah, properly and Jah, are two different, are not not quite the same. That Jehovah refers to the feminine aspect or the mother. This is why when you break down the name Jehovah and you look at the name Eve, Eve in the Bible, in the Hebrew, Hawan or Hawa, you will find that at the root, etymologically, it's one and the same name. Then ask yourself this, why did Adam say, you are mother of all living? But wait. Adam, wasn't she taken out of your rib or your DNA or however, you know, she was taken out of you, right? And you were already here when she was taken out of you. How are you going to call her mother of all living? Adam, aren't you alive? It doesn't really make sense why she called 
the mother of all living. Oh, some would interpret, well, she's going to, everybody who's alive is going to come from her. But then we learn that the serpent has a seed too. So it's not just talking about people or beings who are alive. There's another meaning in it, which in order to decipher it, one has to go to where Moses got his education. And this is one of the reasons why Egypt, quote, end quote, is very, very important, and it is a key. Remember the last days, it says a spiritual Egypt. They will be in a spiritual Egypt. Where is the spiritual Egypt? Look around, look around. But anyway, let's go forward right here within the time that we have. So by the name Jah, the great God, Jah is the great God of the psalmist. In other words, the Psalms, if you could read the Hebrew, because a lot of places where it's, it's Jah, some place they just put God or you just put Lord. But if you're reading the Hebrew, you begin to see, okay, Jah, Jah is there, but they didn't translate that. But the great God of the psalmist, of David, remember, David is a man after my own heart, according to Yahweh, that David is a man after his own heart. And when the Moshiach, when Christos was on the cross, he was chanting a psalm of who? Of Davuti, of Tehuti, of David, of Dawit, of David. He was chanting a psalm of the great psalmist who praises him by the name of Jah or Jach, Jach, Jach. Now it's interesting, Jach, J-A-C-H. This name of Jah is supposed by Furus. Uh, Jesenius and other Hebraists, and the Hebraists now are the Europeans who, who um, in the 17th and more so the 18th and coming forward to the 19th century, were diligently trying to figure out the biblical, the biblical Hebrew, right? So this name of Jah is supposed by Furus, Jesenius, and other Hebraists to be a word abbreviated from I-H-V-H or I-H-W-H or Y-H-W-H or yod Hey wow Hey or yod Hey vav Hey, right? Or derived from a different form of pronunciation. This is what many people will tell you. Oh, Jah, just a short form of, 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 of Yahweh or Jehovah. Many of these things we even thought too, but it, all the all, everything didn't match up. But we said, okay, that sounds like the best thing we heard so far. You understand? And but now when we started to study Macy and then then go and research it for ourselves, we said, no wonder they suppressed him. Talking about his own white people, the white people and European these ones who are who are Helena Blavatsky maniacs and the rest of them, they have suppressed. Macy, called Macy, was pointing in an African and an Ethiopian direction while they were pointing in an Aryan, so-called, we could say the Nazius, Aryan, white supremacy direction. So that's the main difference, and we wanted to make that clear, of Macy, Gerald Macy, from some of the other so-called theophysists and, and um, um, modern Gnostics and spiritualists and so forth and so on. So... The writer of the book of Exodus is right, and the Hebraists have never known it. Now, notice what Macy is saying, because people say, oh, Macy, he's trying, he's trying to say to his white people that y'all are mad. Y'all will prefer as white. This is what Macy said, basically, throughout his work and even some places directly. He said that they would prefer to say that they evolved from a primate or an ape than to say the truth that they have actually evolved or maybe devolved from the black man. That the white man in his madness would say that a primitive monkey was his ancient father instead of being under the black male. That's why they say, don't want to be under the black male, black male. I know they'll say this is another type of male. Yeah, they'll tell you that. But the writer, he says right here, the writer of the book of Exodus is right. And the Hebraists, the European Hebraists who have tried to reconstruct, and the modern Hebrew today is not truly Hebrew. It, it's, it's like a stepping stone, but you have to watch your step because you might slip and, you know, um, break your linguistic neck, so to speak. And these Hebraists at this point have done so. And Macy says that the writer of the book of Exodus is right. And the Hebraists, the European Hebraists, have never known it. Jehovah 
was not the same divinity as Jah. That Jehovah was not. Now, some of us as Rastafari, even years ago, when brothers would be like, yes, I, Jehovah. You know, we were here and be like, yeah, but Jah. They'd be like, yes, Jehovah. Some of them came from Jehovah Witness background, so a lot of that also influenced. And there's some good things that were learned through that experience that hopefully we'll touch on um, among many folks and folks. But there's always a difference that Jah is Jah. Yeah, Jehovah, but something about Jah. Like we say, hallelujah. We don't say hallelujah, Jehovah. People say, well, we're just making it short. So we are abbreviating his glory, or are we actually speaking of another? You understand? We're not speaking of the mother in this sense. We are speaking of the father, as Christ spoke of and for the father. So Macy goes on to say that if Jehovah had been a male divinity from the first, he would have represented Quebec, Quebec, the son of Keb, the genetrix. But the positive changes in the, me in, in the naming preclude that from being a possibility. We'll try to explain. Some, some of you might understand who Quebec is and who Keb is as well and what the genetrix is. But we're just going to move on because the main point is that the positive changes, but the positive change in the naming preclude that from being a possibility. So they assume that, but that couldn't be so. When in the fourth chapter of Genesis, men began to call upon Hashem Jehovah or the Hashem Yahweh, the name was identified with the son of Jehovah Genetrix. In other words, when men, you know, in the, in the fourth chapter of Genesis, when it says, and now men began to call upon the name of the Lord, the, that was the son. They were calling on the son of, for lack of a better word, folks, because it's just the reality of otherwise you, you, you're going to not understand a lot of things in the scripture, which if somebody asks you a hard question, you're going to get upset because you, you have this nonsense theology, and the Bible, it says, study, it says, study to show yourself approved. Ye shall know the truth. In other words, you have to study it to find out the truth. And the truth is what really will free ones. What people prefer to be in their religios, their pseudo religions, their pseudo denominations, and say, well, my Bible says, yeah, all right, whatever. You know, but allow them. But the. The one who was called Hashem, when they called upon the Hashem Jehovah, the name was identical with the son of Jehovah, Jehovah Genetrix, or the son of the mother of all living, the son of Jehovah the Genetrix, or the begetter, to say the mother. So when we look back in ancient archaeology, we find primitive people, they worship the mother goddess. Um, n n not really. Primitive people from after the fall of consciousness, identified the direct way of them being alive connected with the mother. You understand? They had to grow, you understand, to a higher consciousness to identify the father. This is one of the reasons why there's so many baby mama dramas among black folks today, too. You understand? It might go over a couple people's heads, but some folks recognize exactly what it's about. And what's interesting is that we can connect what happened in biblically, scripturally, with what is even happening with black people to this day. We're under almost a genetrix again, the rise of the, this is the feminine period, in, in other words. But, you know, um, so who is there represented by Sut Anush? Sut Anush or Enosh, Enosh, Sut Anush. Remember, Sut is Seth. And Anush from the Egyptian witness in the Hebraic is Enos. And it was in the time of Enos that men began to call on the Hashem Jehovah. And then later they called on El Shaddai. You know, if your child asks you, um, Daddy, why this? Why here they say? Why here they say Elohim? Uh, why here they say Jehovah or Yahweh? Why does God call Himself El Shaddai? Is El Shaddai Elohim? And why does He shut up? Just listen. You know, because you don't know. You basically don't know. You haven't been doing your own homework. You know, that's a part of that um, tradition right there. Also, the Hebrew. This is the point right here. The Hebrew carefully retains the terminal. Hey. Hey, right here. This is hey. 
hey. Aleph, hey, yo, hey. It, it, it maintains the hey, right? The terminal. That means the last part. Now, if you understand the language, the, 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 the Hebraics and the Ethiopics, you will understand that the hey signifies at that terminal position, you understand, to the name of J-H-V or J-H-W for the feminine. It was a feminine, linguistic, feminine marker in the language. As in Aloha, Aloha, Eloha, you know, Eloha usually in the scripture is defining a goddess. See, you know, when you're reading the Hebrew and you're looking at just that one extra letter right there, that one extra letter right there has a signification. But then if you look in the English, they'll just say, oh, the goddess. You see, the goddess. Now, if, Macy asks, the deity made known to and by Moses had been Jehovah, this is the key, check this out. If he had been Jehovah, he would, of course, have been known already by that name. You know, if the one who revealed to Moses in the burning bush was Jehovah or was Yahweh, wouldn't he have already been known by that name? So, yeah, I know who you are. No, no, who am I to say? He, he did not know. So Macy makes a good point here. He says, if the deity had been known to, had, had made known to, and by Moses had been Jehovah, he would, of course, have been already known already by that name. And by making the name of Jah, in other words, when, when those seek to make the name of Jah identical with Jehovah or the the, the bigrammaton, the two-letter name, with the four-letter name, when they try to say that it's basically one and the same thing, guess what? Hmm? The God is made to be a false witness against himself. See, they haven't thought about that. Because if we, uh, if, if we accept what they're saying, right, to be true, that Jah is the same as Jehovah, and, and, and it's not, you understand, that Jah is the same as Jehovah, then what the deity or what the God is saying here, we have to say he's a liar. You see what I'm saying? We have to say that, but the Bible teaches us and the word teaches and the apostles have taught us that, and David mainly has taught us, let every man be a liar, but Jah be true. You know what I'm saying? Let every man, everybody could be a liar, but Jah is true. So if we say that Jah and Jehovah is the same name, then you are making Jah bear false witness against himself. You see, because it's clear that he says, he says um, that he was not known. He says he was not known by his name Jehovah. Was he not known to them? They have this in 6 and, six and 3 of Exodus. But then... If you go back to Genesis and you study you know, good Bible, good footnotes, or the Hebrew, you'll find out that, well, the Jehovah, if Jehovah is the, the English, Germanic, Jewish uh, translation, transliteration of, of, of Yahweh, yod heh wow -He, then we find that name before, we find that name all throughout um, 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 Genesis. So... How is he saying that? You see, those are part, parts that people, that they would tell you, don't think about this. Don't, don't forget about it. You understand? And that's what makes matters worse because of the truth that they want you to forget about. And we're going to try to scroll forward to that truth within this, within this um, part two of this series right here. The two names have been confused by translators, Macy says correctly. These two names have been confused, Jah and Jehovah. See, see. What's there in the word is clear, but what the translators have done is confuse these two. And this has also confused spirituality as well as theology and has given, given the free door or the open door to Antichrist and the other bunch of confused denomination and religionists to go about and say, you know, to, to tweak it a little bit different and act like they've come home for new revelation when all they're doing is confusing the already confused confusion. But here we have Macy saying that the two names have been confused by translators. The Hebrew rabbins or the rabbis, those who really understood the language when the language was properly understood, they knew well enough that Jehovah was not Jah. 
that Jehovah, once again, I like to use the example. We say hallelujah. We don't say hallelujah, Jehovah. And there's a lot of other cases and examples. Or we don't say hallelujah, Yahweh. Some would say that, but there's very little to no scriptural evidence that that was said. They might do that nowadays in 2012, perhaps, but they did not do that over the past how many years you want to give it? 4,000? Some say it was 40,000, but, you know, you know, find the truth for yourself. Anyway, um, it says the Hebrew rabbins knew well enough that, that Jehovah was not Jah, but a feminine divinity, a feminine divinity whose name was therefore not to be uttered. You know, this whole point about why do the Jews say that certain name not to be uttered? Some say, oh, that's just foolishness. Is it really? Okay, let's go forward. And when the name was written, it was supplemented by the name of Adonai or Adonai, Adonai. You understand? Some say Adoni, but that's the wrong. It's Adonai. Adonai is different than Adoni. Adoni is one. Adonai is is royal honorific. It can refer to more than one Adoni, more than one Lord, or it can refer to one in, in the sense of the plural, plural um, majesty. You understand? As like when Haile Selassie says we. You understand? We. And you say, well, there is one of you. Who are you speaking for? He is speaking for himself, the Christ, and all those do son of the kingdom. That's who he's speaking for when he says we. You understand? So like to say the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in that sense. But the name was written, when it was written, it was supplemented by the title of Adonai. And Adonai was employed in place of it to distinguish the male God from the goddess. You see, all that stuff people be reading in the Old Testament when it said the people went astray to the to, to and they was worshiping the goddess of heaven, so forth and so on. And 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 the prophets say that he they have turned their backs on me. And and then you have to ask yourself, but and, and, where in have they done this? And if you just look at it from a Gentile Western misconception, you you, you will misrate over it. But you will have to study to show yourself approved to really see that 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 truth that's right there, but you will have to in a sense go in it scientifically. The name oh, that's a science. Science now they get a bad a bad a bad rap. Science scientia is the Latin. It means uh, gnosis or gnosis in the Greek, but basically that word means knowledge. So when you're reading the Greek Bible, right, in the Koina, and Christ says, um, ye shall know the truth, he says, you shall gnosis, you shall have gnosis of the truth. So the word gnosis or gnostic is not a bad word in itself. In fact, when Paul said science falsely so-called, he's speaking of um, gnosis or gnosticoi pseudonymous. Pseudonymous means falsely called. Like these false scientists today who try to say, well, the apocalypse like NASA is not now. In other words, they're trying to tell you that. Don't worry about 20, 2012. Nothing's going to happen this year. They said it from the first day of 2012. Just putting it on record so we can have some evidence for the future reference. The name by which the deity had not been previously known is Jah. That is the name that the deity or the God had not been previously known by. When, when he says, but by the name I was not known by, what name is that? Now, in some of the Schofield and other um, Bibles, they at least explain to you some of the divine some of the divine names, you know, some of the basic meaning of a divine name. Because, see, in the West, in um, Mystery Babylon, we say God. People say, we all worship the same God. What is his name? You know, when next time somebody does that to you, they say, we all worship the same God. What is his name? And what is his father's name? Or his son's name, rather. What is his name and what is his son's name? That's what, that's what is said in Proverbs. You understand? What is his name and what is his son's name? If you speak the truth and if you even know the true God. 
Now here we, we're looking at this right here. Was this chapter, chapter is this six right here, um, where it says, "But by my name, um, I was not I was not known to them. He appeared to them by." Let's see. This is okay. That's four. Give me one moment, brothers and sisters, because um, it is what it is. He is who he is. But what is his name? But what is his name? What we want to just confirm something right here. Um, but by my name, okay, yeah, but by my name, yeah, by my name. Um, okay, now they have, they have Jehovah, or Yahweh there in that Masoretic. But we put a question mark there because what we're looking at is the inner logic. If what he's saying is true. If he says, but I was not known by this name, then how are they going to say that name that, you know, how are they going to say that if we find that, well, they was talking about him by this name before? Okay, now just to move forward right here, there's a little bit more that we want to share right here where it says, the name by which the deity had not been previously known is Jah. Now what's interesting about Macy, this is well before Rastafari. This is what's so interesting about this. Because Macy wrote this book in 1881. Yeah, 1881. And he's saying right here, the book, a book of the beginnings containing an attempt to recover and reconstitute the lost origins of the myths and mysteries, types and symbols, religion and language with Egypt for the mouthpiece and Africa as the birthplace. And Africa as the birthplace. And when this book was um, printed, uh, either it's this book or it's another book like to it, they said that um, there was only 300 copies of this in circulation. That's what was so very interesting and amazing. It says by only 300 copies of one of his books was put into, um, was put into uh, circulation. And most of us haven't found this until recently, the advent of the Internet. He begins off here with a prophecy from 1884, because many were speaking about, according to the Hebrews and the biblical prophecies, the end of the world is the end of the aeon, or age, or cycle of time. And we have seen the prophecy fulfilled in the rear lunar and planetary conjunction, which occurred on the 3rd of March. This is written here from March 4th. 1881. Now remember the birth of Lich Teferi is 1892, right? It now remains for scientific astronomy to determine the length of this particular cycle of time and define its relationship to the period of precession. The ending of an old world or Iones or Ian and the commencement of a new is an appropriate date for the birth of a book of the beginning. And this is what Macy writes at the first part of this book. So that's to give one just a context of why we, of the Society of His Majesty, say that Macy's work is a, is a, is a vital reference source because what he does in, throughout his volumes is give us accurate and actual details that help to explain or at least give us a more probable and logical explanation for much both in the Old Testament, the Hebrew Bible, as well as in the New Testament concerning Yehoshua HaMoshiach, our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And he admits this too in his work, the, the blackness of this is one reason why the Helena Blavatsky's and the rest of them, they love the fact that he has that he had a brain, a scientific mind, and he pulled it together. He did his research, but they wanted him to favor the Aryan white supremacy approach because that's what was going on back in those days and time. But he was like the underdog. He was like the so-called black sheep of that white um, European, um, how would we call these new age families? So a spiritualist, new age, so forth and so on, um, family. Here he goes on to say that this occurs in a fragment, in the fragment of an ancient hymn called the Song of Moses or Mashu. Ethiopically we say Muse, and Muse in Ethiopic, it's a name 
but really it's a title, Muse. It means the head of a fraternal order. This is the key link also. So from Ethiopic, we find that Moses, who first says it is what it is, to refer to God and to the reality. You know, because remember, in Egypt, they had many gods. They had, a, they had a cat god, a dog god. They had this kind of god, so forth and so on. We're not trifling, but at certain points of disillumination, a lot of even the best things can get distorted when you have ignorance. I mean, look at Christianity. The, even the best thing can get woefully twisted and bent out of shape. You know, that people are saying Christmas and talking about Santa Claus and reindeer. How do these two connect? They don't. But this occurs in the fragment of an ancient hymn. This ancient hymn is from Exodus uh, 15 and 2, the Song of Moses or Mashu, who made, quote, hereditary titles for Re, for Re, falsely called Ra. And in Exodus uh, 17 and 16, two of the oldest remains of writings of which we have only a later reshuff, like a reshuffling in the present Pentateuch. The originally given, the name originally given in Exodus is Jah or Yah, the God of the far earlier fragments. In other words, when we look at the God of the oldest portion of, 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 of Torah, the name used and, and referred to is Yah, not Jehovah, but is Yah in the oldest fragments or the far earlier fragments. And of the Psalms, too, the oldest part of the Psalms, the name of deity referred to is Yah or we call in English Jah, as well as in ancient poetry. There's fragments throughout the Bible of ancient poetry, many of these parts older than the stories written around it, and that also refers to Jah as the oldest. So why would the Rastafari look at all the names, divine names of God, scroll all the way through to the 68th Psalm and the fourth verse and find Jah and hold to it? and still hold to that name to this very day. Macy gives us some interesting highlights and insights. The same as the Egyptian kak, kak, K-A-K, all right? Kak or kak, right? Kak. In the hard form, ja is kak, kak or hak, right? Hak. And jah is the intermediate spelling of the name, because we don't have too much room right here. We'll maybe get into that in the next one. He's going to break down in a lot of different um, languages here. Uh, Kak or K-A-K, Hak, H-A-K, Jak, J-A-C-H, with other variants will be found in many languages, including the Hebrew type name of Ak. Like we say, what's up, Ak? Ak is brother, right? Ak. Ak is the Assyrian moon god, the English Jack, Kodiak, I Jack. In Saravekka, you have Kake, C A C H E. In Laos, you have Haka, or Haka, like Waka, Waka, Haka, X A C A. The Bushmen have Kagu. Uh, Loanga have Chikokake, which is a black so called idol, they say. The Gay, or Ge. G-E, the black sun. You have Kugra, Erob, um Sengalese have Jaka, but Jaka to the Sengalese is the, quote, devil. Seneca, uh, Kakqua, Port Phillip, Kaker, the Susu say Kige, um, the Anagami Naga uh, say Akuke, the Cubans have uh, Joe Kahuna, the Gala, in the Gala, Ormo, Gala, say Wak, Wak as Waka, Waka or Wak. Um, Gonga, say Yeko, Sereres, say Awogwe, um, the Finnish, say Uko, Otomi, say Oka, the Sioux, as the Indians, say Ogaha, the Arabs, say Jauk. The Japanese have <laughs> Jacuzzi, which is the god of healing, Jacuzzi. Hmm. Konyaga say Iyak, 
the evil spirit, and many more. Now, even though this name is found in many different places, there are different interpretations to the character. But let us remember Yaakov, Jacob for a moment. Jacob for a moment has a very dark character. Even Jacob himself says in this Torah portion, reading and feeding, that his days have been few on this earth when Pharaoh asked him, how you doing and everything, and, and, and Jacob said, um, my days have been few but evil. He's, he's experienced a lot of, this is Jacob, Yaakov, um, Jacob here, Yaakov, Yaakov here, or Jacob, Jacob here. Um, which is his Egyptian, the Egyptian um, um, name of Jacob that has been found, actually, as well. But um, Jacob himself says that, and then he blesses. He blesses Pharaoh. Pharaoh doesn't bless Jacob. Jacob blesses Pharaoh, which is a very curious thing. Jacob blesses Pharaoh. Hmm. They said that usually it's the principle is that the um, the greater... The, the greater bless the less. Even when we bless God, we bless his name. We bless his name. You see what I'm saying? We worship God, not really bless God, we bless his name. Just a, just a, a, point, of, a point of order, because we live in cuckoo times where anything that, that, that people want to say goes, but it doesn't go with principle. Um, this conclude this part right here. The name depends on K-A-K which means darkness, and on light, whether as star, moon, or sun, being the deity, the light, in other words, the sun, the moon, or star of the dark. So in the darkness, there's this star shining. In that darkness of that generation, the spiritual ignorance of that generation, there was Yaiko and there was Israel, on the rise, just like in this particular period of time, too, there is Rastafari. In this period of darkness and ignorance, there is the King of Kings and his Christ, that is that light shining in the darkness, but those who are of the world, of the darkness, the chloro, they don't get it. Now, the name depends on cock, meaning darkness, and on light. Uh, we went over that. Whether as star, moon, or sun, being the deity of the dark. Now, cock, this is page 293 of Gerald Macy's second book, um, Book of the Beginnings. Um, he says right here that cock was the solar god in the akar. So is Ja. So he's now saying that when you look at ancient Egypt, there was this uh, solar god, a solar god. In other words, that means he was of the Father. You know, represent like Christ, the solar god of the Father. You know, and Christianity is also, in truth, a solar religion of the Father, not lunar. Hebraicism is more lunar, under the mother, waiting for the revelation of the Father, what the Moshiach represents. Kak was the solar god in the Akar, so is Jah, the divinity of the hinder part shown to Moses. Remember, it says, um, you cannot see my face, but when I pass by, I cover your, cover, your, cover your eyes, that when I pass by, you'll see my hinder part, but no man can see my face and live. So that's a, that's a reference right there. So Yah, he had Yod and, and Hey, is annexed to a noun to denote horrible darkness when we go to Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 31, that we have the name Yah, and that's put at the end, as we have Hallelujah, or to Yah. So at the, at the end of the Elilah, 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 that's where Hallelujah, say Elilta, say Elilta, or exaltation to Yah. That's where the connection with hallelujah. It doesn't mean to say, I love you, God, I pray. No, it's to make a certain sound. Because once you make a certain sound in the community, it creates an a, a atmosphere. It creates, like it says in, in the Psalms, that Jah inhabits the praises of Israel. As we sing together in the proper spirit and vibe and with the proper intention, it creates an atmosphere for the true God to dwell amongst us. 
It's not really about all these things that people be trying to do. All they have to do is get their head and their heart really in order, their spirit and their soul in order, and, 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 and focus and discipline of the mind, and God will inhabit. But without that discipline, he cannot inhabit chaos. This is why keeping the Sabbath is the beginning, you know, of that process of coming out of Babylon. So here's my highlight that I want to conclude this part right here. And this is a very, this is much, so much more to this, but we wanted to kind of touch on it is what it is. You know, to begin the reason of it is what it is. Because a lot of people saw it is what it is. But they don't know they're talking about Jah. They don't know they're talking about Jah when they say that. They think they're talking about, you know, but Jah is the God of darkness. Notice, Jah is the God of darkness. Now, some will say, no, my God is the God of light. But then I can show you countless places in the Bible throughout. I mean, how, how would you explain that? They can't because they don't know it. The God of the psalmist who bowed the heavens and came down. The God of the psalmist who, and we have this in Psalm um, 1811. He bowed the heavens and came down and yared and jared and wereded. He bowed the heavens. Now, this whole solar alignment thing coming up, you know, where they say the NASA is trying to say it always be happening like that, but uh, w w the, the, the Earth makes certain rotations in, in space at a certain point, but all these things aligning at once doesn't always happen. That's why they be liars, because they be lying to you. But here it says that the God of the psalmist, who is Jah, he bowed the heavens and came down and was the descending sun, the beneficent deity of the dark. The darkness was his secret place. Now, notice what they're talking about 2012, December 21st, um, 2012, which would be the 12th of Toxus, 7,505, according to Ethiopia, we cannot go to Atel, according to Ethiopian calculations, right? That particular day, right? Notice the connection right here. The God of darkness, the darkness was his secret place, according to the Psalms, according to the scriptures. But he is the light shining in that darkness. Now we're coming to the dark rift. It's a particular point of the ancient heavens that was not aligned in such a way for the past 25,800, 26,000 years, some say. The God of the dark was portrayed as the black God. Now, this is so very interesting, because he's, he's going to go into, Macy's then going to take us through a couple of pages right here, where he's going to basically explain, you know, the goddess and the sun worship. Not, not what the Freemasons, see, it's different than what the Freemasons, the Freemasons are giving you their own spin. They're telling you about their own religion, basically, what Freemasons are doing. They're telling you about their own religion. You understand? But, what Macy is doing right here, Gerald Macy, he's going through all the ancient types and showing the connective, the logic going through it. Like when we say that Moses first said it is what it is, we can look at the Hebrew statement of what he said and what Moses said to the people and translate it from the Hebrew as meaning it is what it is. He is who he is. And when the people heard that and not no, not no so-called priesthood or so-called deity talking about I'm just the God of one element or I'm the God of two elements, I'm the God of the river, I'm the God of the pond, I'm the God of the lake shore, the seaside. But he is who he is. They understood that he, this is our God. Our God is he who is who he is. But what happened with the Egyptians or, or with the Israelites, they were in Egypt so long. They had gone through every different kind of so-called church denomination, religious bandwagon. They'd done everything. Like niggas. They, 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 they've been there. Like niggas can say, yeah, I was Jehovah's Witness. Yeah, I've been there. I, I did that. I was down to Muslims. I was such and such and such. And then they found the truth of Rastafari, of the King of Kings and his Christ. So, my brothers and sisters, though we have much more to share with you on this subject matter, we just want to kind of wrap this up. Oh, before we go forward and come again, y'all willing, there's one other 
there's one other matter that we would like to uh, touch on. Just, just return to Exodus 3 and 14. Now, I know we've been talking about a big Egyptian connection, but um, if you're not into numbers, but if you know what's in numbers, if you know what is contained in numbers, if you understand and comprehend that there's a certain divine science in numbers, look at Revelation 3.14 with me for a moment. Remember, this area of Scripture is the revelation of the name of Jah. Schofield here has the name Jehovah, but more correctly, of the name of Jah. When we go to Revelation 3.14, and see, 3.14, that is the pi. That's what they call pi or phi. They call pi or the golden mean ratio is known as 314, the golden mean ratio. They say that the golden rule is to do unto others what you would like done unto you. And this is one reason why we share these teachings and point out certain references because we would have hoped and liked and loved those brothers and sisters who do that. They find some truth in there and they, and they share it with other brothers and sisters so that we will be in the know. But that's the golden mean. That's the golden rule. You understand? Babylon say he who has the gold rule. That's bullshit. You understand? Basically. And they're speaking metaphysically. He who has the golden characteristics rule. But most people are so materialistic that they think that the one who has a pocket full of gold or has all the gold rule. Not if he can't defend it. But when we're speaking metaphysically, you understand, understanding the alchemy, that one who has that golden characteristic, in other words, one who keeps the Ten Commandments, it is the embodiment of the Ten Commandments, for example. The Ten Commandments is the gold. You understand? In other words, one who keeps the testimonies of Jesus Christos or seeks to do that and, and, and seeks to, to submit themselves to God in and through the name and example of Christ, well, this person is gold. They're valuable. They can go through the fire seven times and still be pure. So on that level of gold. But this 314 is what's known as the golden mean. And when we look at 314 in Revelation, it says, and this is the message to the final church, the last of the seven churches. By the time you get to Revelation chapter 3, verse 14, in the book of Revelation, you would have gone through six other churches, six other church ages, six other ages since the crucifixion, um, death, and resurrection of our black Lord and Savior. There were six before you get here, and now here's the seventh church. The seventh church is called Laodicea. Laodicea, and Laodicea means judgment to the people, Laodicea, right? And it's the final state of apostasy, the final state of falling away. And we're living in that time of humanity where humanity has lost its mind. For real, I mean, just look at what's going on, and hopefully you haven't lost your mind too. You understand? Because we're at a time where ones have lost their, the stability of their souls. It's almost like the, 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 whole, the whole earth is out of course. So why don't we think there will not be great shakeups in the heavens too? Since if you understand that this was created for man, if man is losing his stability and focus, why would he not think that the heavens, to wake him up, shake him up, and break him up, won't be shaken and lose his stability? As above, so below. That's biblical there. Not Mason, the Masons stole it out the Bible. But that's biblical. And to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, these things saith the Amen. Sound like an Egyptian name there, right? That's an Amen. I heard about Amen. Amen Ra? Amen. Amen Ray? It says the Amen. What, what else it says? The faithful and true witness. Wait, 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 wait. Back in ancient Egypt, didn't they say the Amen was the hidden one? The hidden one. Wait, so doesn't Jeremiah, one of the prophets, say that thou art the, I think it's Isaiah perhaps, thou art the God who hideth himself? You, or you're a savior who hideth thyself? Hidden one, Amen. Wait, this is the red letter Bible, right? 
the red letter Bible, they say whatever's in red is where Jesus is speaking, right? So Jesus is saying, these things that are being said, I'm Amen. I'm the Amen. Wow, so he really was there in the beginning. Huh. Amen, the faithful and the true witness, the beginning. That's what Christ said to the disciples. You was with me in the beginning. They're like, well, what was he talking about? The beginning of the creation of God, of, in other words, Elohim. So here in Revelation 3 and 14, we have a direct link with Exodus chapter 3, verse 14. And God said to Moses, I am that I am. And he said, thus shalt thou say to the children of Israel, I am have sent me. And God said, moreover, verse 15 to Moses, thus shalt thou say to the children of Israel, the Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Yishak, the God of Yaakov, have sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this is my memorial to all generations. So what the Almighty is doing right there is testifying to that he's the God of Abraham, the father, Isaac, the son, and Israel. Isn't Israel, they say, spiritual Israel, right? They said, not all Israel is Israel, but it's about spiritual Israel. So he's saying, this is my memorial. This is how I'm to be remembered. I am the God of these three. I am the power of the Trinity. And thus is fulfilled the mystery of the King of Kings and his Christ. So stay tuned, brothers and sisters. More to come, y'all willing. Shalom. Rastafari.